Sometimes a pattern just falls in your lap and you have to make it. Well, hello folks. My name is Stephanie Canada. If this is the first time on your channel, no, I don't always drop patterns from the sky. Never fear. Yes, my last name is Canada. No, I don't live there. But yes, I would like to go eventually because I still haven't been there. If you enjoy vintage patterns and sarcasm, go ahead and click that subscribe button now. Now in today's video, like I said, sometimes patterns just fall in your lap. I'm not doing that again. This pattern's really old and you just need to make them. Now, in case you've been under a rock and haven't heard, there's this little show on Netflix called The Queen's Gambit. It has amazing costumes and is just overall brilliant to look at. However, I am not a big giant fan of the 60s. However, I got a lot of patterns a little while back and this cute little puppy was sitting in there. Yeah. I just need to make it. Now I've been seeing this lovely image of the character of Beth Harmon floating around the internet and it really is quite beautiful. And while I don't always go for the jumper blouse set situation, I figured this time I'd give it a go. Now I certainly am not the first creator to make this dress and I am positive I won't be the last. However, if you wanna go check out Rachel Maxey's video or What's Sewing On's video, they're quite lovely and both took inspiration from the show to make their own individual creations. And I enjoyed watching both of them equally. Also cause dogs. I just love dogs. Speaking of dogs, I would like to introduce you all to Candy. Yes, I do say her name like that every single time. She's a puppy, go with me. This is the newest member of our family and she's going to take, I'm sure I'm gonna get all the comments are just gonna be about her. And that is okay. She is brand new and yes, the five-year-old did indeed name her because there's no way in heaven's earth I would name a dog Candy Canada. But it was better than princess, so I'll take it. Because nothing says let's take on a sewing challenge that's probably above your head. Like some coffee and get started. The early 1940s, a time of war and mend and make do mentality. By following the guidelines set forth by the US government, this Hollywood pattern, once a company of starlets and their movie garb, transitioned into the practical everyday wartime attire on the home front. After beating the odds and surviving to 2020, I couldn't allow this pattern to deteriorate any further before it got use one more time. I did my best to carefully trace out what was left and what was too far gone. I had to recreate to the best of my ability. However, one thing I did have to do was size up. So I did do some rough version of slash and spread method, the standard for the time frame, with my infamous packing tape roller, because I still don't actually have a regular roll of scotch tape that I can find. But in my haste, I may have accidentally grabbed my waistband piece when I attached it to the very first bodice opening. After I corrected that grave error, I moved forward with actual scraps from my paper that I had cut out the pattern from. Once the bodice was done, I needed a refill of fortitude. But I knew I wasn't done. However, after tackling what felt like an insurmountable task, it was time to cut it out. But memory is a funny thing. In my gray matter, I was positive that I had six yards of this lovely blue and black checked fabric. I did not. When I laid it out, I realized that my memory, like cheese, was a little bit shredded. This was going to take much more work than anticipated. 
One quick tip for when you get caught in the brain fog that sometimes happens when you catch these errors in cutting. Don't forget to read your own notes that you have written on the pattern. I was supposed to leave an extra half inch at center front of the skirt piece. And instead, I started by cutting it away. Once I had finished dealing with that flub, I thought I was done, only to realize that I had almost not cut out my waistband. So with that, I was toast, and not the buttered kind. So I went to bed. In the morning, my brain had congealed back into some semblance of the appropriate gray matter that it should have been the night before. So I began stitching. Firstly with stay stitches, so my armholes and neck holes wouldn't gape away more than my reckless cut job had already done to them. Next comes my arch nemesis, the darts. And this pattern had an extra curveball to throw me. Instead of the usual notation at the back neck, there was a little odd line. And much to my horror, it was not some version of a weird tuck like I had done in my Miss Scarlet dress. Oh no, it was a one quarter inch dart that I needed to draw out on my own with chalk. So measuring one eighth inch on either side, I did my lovely little chalk line. And yes, blue chalk is the only one that I can find right now, but it did sort of work. With the darts as in, as they were going to get, I turned my attention to the next step that informed me to do a double turn and then hand stitch the front facing portion. Pretty straightforward, not too bad. After a bit of gathering of the front panel, it was time to test out my adjustments. And to say I was nervous was an understatement. Surprisingly, I had done quite well on the front bit and no, you aren't seeing things. The instructions do note to only line up the front edge with the seam line of the back neck section, not the edge of the fabric. A quick try on was necessary as I was highly concerned that the waist on this would not fit me. And then I pulled a rabbit out of my hat, I mean bias tape out of my tin, because I couldn't be bothered to cut out a back neck facing with the adjustments that I'd made. Uh, so I just used some half inch black double fold bias tape and moved on. I don't think this is how you're supposed to do this. After untwisting the pretzel that I had made of myself, it was starting to look like progress was being made. And then I realized it was time to deal with a mistake from last night. And as I am not a time traveler and do not actually have a bolt of dead stock fabric to just go cut a new piece, I had to make do. And now, a brief puppy break. With the ball of floof, a wandered off with the dad and a tiny person downstairs. I could focus my attention to seaming the entire skirt together. And it was then that I realized my error wasn't as grave as I had initially thought. The line that was notated on my pattern that was three inches into the piece from center front was actually the front pleat, and that is what everyone would be seeing. The interfacing and my jagged zigzag stitching mess to keep it all together would just be between you and me. So you won't say anything, right? The 1940s had this affinity with westerns and top stitching, but to create the look without the quote waste of double the thread 
they employed the iron the seam down and top stitch the whole thing method. While this isn't my favorite technique, as I find it to be a bit finicky at points, I did enjoy the finished look overall. Now on day three, the very first thing to do was try on the entire Dagon thing. And it was unfortunately in this moment that I realized that one inch bonus lengthening shenanigans that I had gone through at the beginning, I didn't actually really need that. I probably could have gotten away with just a half inch or none at all. And as I really didn't like the way it was fitting on me, I seam ripped it all off and redid it. And with that all said and done, facings attached, hem done, zipper in, I looked and realized I still had a blouse to go. But sometimes you just say, nope. So off I went to my favorite Goodwill instead. And yes, in Florida, sometimes it goes from being full sun to downpour in a matter of seconds. And I got to thrifting. Oh yeah, that'll do. Now let's check out and do a reveal. turned out not as bad as I thought. For my first really big sizing up, because all the other times I've been like, oh, it's a blouse, I'll just adjust it a little bit this direction and it'll all be good. Uh, this was actually, uh, well, or was it the pants? No, I think they were equally daunting. Screw it, they were equally daunting. But this is my first time sizing up an entire dress from such a small waist and bust. Either way, I also had to, you know, extend some length, which I apparently didn't actually need to do in the bodice, but hey, <laughs> uh, that's what happens when you measure yourself. Some things that I wish I would have done differently. I wish I would have taken more time to fit the waist. It's fine, but I actually have probably about an extra inch and a half to two, maybe two and a half, three inches in my waistband proper. And since there's no side seam on the waistband, if I were to readjust it, I'd have to like, cut it and redo the whole thing and it's all top stitched and I don't really want to deal with it. And shockingly, I'm quite happy with my little uh, thrifted blouse here other than the fact that, yeah, that doesn't, that, that don't, that don't reach. <laughs> but so goes my entire life. This is nothing new for me. I've had this problem since I was small. Did you watch The Queen's Gambit? Do you enjoy the wardrobe as much as I did? Were you equally as in suspense the entire freaking time? The storytelling in this really was amazing. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of the series and how you think my 1940s take on it sort of fits in with the movie. It was only by happenstance that I actually chose the one that actually vaguely looks like a chessboard, so hey, winning! If you did enjoy this, make sure you click that like button. Being sure to subscribe so you don't miss future uploads from me when I do sewing things, pattern things, and just general sarcastic things. Thanks so much for watching, folks. I really appreciate you and your time. We'll see y'all next time. Sometimes a pattern... Try that again, please. Sometimes a pattern drops. Sometimes a pattern... <laughs> drops no, that... all the way to the floor. <laughs> drops all the way to the floor. <laughs>
<laughs> the outtakes on this are gonna be good. I think that's it for the voice over for this. Day three audio is garbage. Hi, baby. Come here, just for a second. We're gonna do one little thing and then we're gonna, then you can be in the videos. You ready? You just want cuddles, that's all you want. Do you want daddy cuddles or mommy cuddles? And if you've made it this far in the video, just know that I've only really watched this show for about 30 seconds to really get a handle on what's going on. So I don't actually know any of the characters or what's going on. And that will be at the very end because I'm not gonna give that away.